Mrs. Brennan, tell us about your young days when you were a girl growing up in Arklow. Well, the, the Arklow of my young days was uh, very different to the Arklow of today, of course. Uh, I was born in the year of the three eights, which is a good long time ago. And uh, Arklow was a very happy little spot in these days. Uh, there was a big fishing fleet and uh, we had the uh, Parnell quarries and then we had uh, um, the Earl of Caresforth living on one side of the town and the Earl of Wicklow on the other, both people employing uh, quite a number of people. S and then of course being a seaside town there was always a lot of money coming from America and a lot of the uh, men were uh, sailors of uh, deep sea sailors, not the fishing as well as the fishing fleet. They go for away for years, perhaps, and sent home quite a lot of money. And so, in that way, the town was prosperous and happy and nice, easy-going little town. Most of the fishermen owned their own houses and went away to the mackerel fishing and eat then the herring fishing and sent home money to their wives and came home at the end of each fishing and shared if they had a big lot of money that had be quite a lot of money knocking around. And uh, these, this is my recollection really of Arklow in my young days. Then by degrees the fishing failed as you know you can read sometimes about no herrings and fish being seen in various parts for a long time. and. Uh, the town gradually became poorer, and it was very poor for, oh, for years. And uh, then in 1895, I think, uh, our late parish priest, the late Canon James Dunphy, succeeded in bringing Kynox factory to Arklow, Kynox explosive factory. And uh, they were... They started over on the north side of the river and built a very big factory and employed a great number of men. And then uh, the the um, explosives they made in the beginning were um, exported. They had their own, a couple of steamers of their own, and they used to run the, the powder down to the harbour and um, export from there. Well, then the war came along, and of course that was a big, a very big uplift to the town. Kynox got the order for all the explosives, and uh, the town wasn't able to supply enough workers, and the workers came in from all over, all from south the Wexford side and the Wicklow side, special trains bringing them in. And they had canteens for, feed, for feeding these people, and a lot of them used to go back. Uh, and of course, a great many of them were housed in the town. And uh, hundreds of them used to go away in the evening, back to their own homes. And um, they, they worked, they were, there was continual work. They all worked on eight hour shifts, night and day. And uh, we people living in the main street uh, were always prepared for the end of the shift and I remember uh, you could actually hear the, the 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 sound of the men wearing the clogs they wore clogs for safety uh, in the works because it was very very dangerous of course and you'd hear them coming up the street when it was time for their train a lot of them off, off again and in in the morning then again it was a wonderful a wonderful town there was wonderful money in it during these days and uh, a great deal of social life too that hadn't been in it before because most of the uh, uh, Kynox executives uh, brought over their wives and they built houses all on Ferrybank where there weren't houses before and they had a, what they called a staff house Seabank is a big house uh, further over and it was taken over as a staff house for any of them who hadn't their wives with them. So uh, things went on like that for a long, long time until 
unfortunately the explosion of 1917 came along and there were I think 27 men or something blown up at that time and it was very sad times in Arklow indeed very sad it never seemed to go on well after that I don't know that the explosion had really anything to do with the closing down of the works or not but a great many of the workers then went to the kind of factory in, in Ambog and Twilly, that's not the correct pronunciation. I forget the correct pronunciation of that place now. It's near Durban in South Africa. A lot of them went there. Some of them, I think, are still there. Some of, the, some of their people are still there. And uh, finally, it closed down altogether, which was a very great loss. The Parnell quarries also uh, closed. I can't remember exactly when they closed, but I know there were just... When the first sweep came along, uh, the first hospital sweep came along, I remember a friend of mine buying a, a ticket. There were a pound then in the hopes that he would win a prize. And he said, he always said, well, I'll open the Parnell quarries again if I get this. I think there were hundred thousands in the beginning, weren't they? Uh, but the Parnell quarry never opened again. It gave a great deal of employment. They also exported the uh, the stone. They had a little jetty running down to the uh, pier also. And um, they made what they called sets. And I always felt very proud uh, in London when I ever in time I was there because I, I was told that um, Kingsway in London is paved with um, macadam from the Parnell Quarry at the Rock. Well, that closed and that made uh, left a, b a great void. There was very little em employment then at that, uh, that time. But now, of course, it's a wonderful town. There's all sorts of employment and all the rest of it. And Kynox is just uh, a place to look at now, not, not anything at all like it used to be. They, um, at one time, they had a very ambitious scheme to keep out the sea. Uh, a man named uh, Page was his name. He got a special, an Englishman, of course, and he um, he piled the the North Beach. You can still see the the remains of it there, and all our visitors tell us that uh, these piles are spoiling our beach. But I'm afraid without the piles, we'd have no beach at all, because there's only the remains of them left now. They were done in a in a, a triangular form, you know, and boarded up from the piles, which kept the sea from uh, washing away the sand from the powder houses, because the powder houses have had to have the protection of a mound of sand before each house, and that was the idea, to prevent the sea from washing away the sand. I suppose it did do it, I don't know really. But there was a great deal of money spent and a lot of people were in a great way. So by degrees, then, they all drifted drifted away. Many of them didn't remain in Arklow. A lot of them drifted away. But it was a nice, happy little town in these days. <laughs>